Good morning, and welcome to the Underwood Baptist Church Daily Devotion for Wednesday, July 7th. If you're a Christian, I have a question for you this morning. Why do you have faith in God? Let me extend it a little further, maybe. Why do you trust God? Why do you serve God? Why do you obey God? Why do you believe in God? These may seem like simple questions, but if you think about them for a bit, the answers may be hard to actually put into words. You may intuitively believe these things, you may intuitively do these things, but the why may be a little harder to parse out. You may start out by saying, well, I trust in God, obey Him and serve Him, serve him because the Bible tells me to. But then I believe in the Bible because it's the Bible's God's Word. It, that kind of quickly moves into kind of some circular logic there pretty quickly, right? So what I'm digging at here is, what is the foundation of your faith? What is it based on? Why do you do what you do? And these are important questions for a couple of reasons. First, if your why or if your foundation is off, everything else is off. Or if your foundation is unstable or weak, everything else crumbles. And think about what we've seen recently with the, the building in, in Florida. We don't know exactly why that occurred yet, but fundamentally it's probably going to come down to somewhere some piece of that foundation something that was holding that building up failed and it fell down think about the parable of the wise man uh, that jesus told who built his house on the rock and the foolish man who built his house on the sand the rains came down the floods came up the house with the good foundation stood firm the house with the bad foundation fell flat it was destroyed so if your faith if your foundation if your reason if your why is not based on something solid and unmovable then eventually it's going to crumble, it's going to fall away, and probably at the first signs of trouble, it won't last. Psalms 11.3 tells us, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Once our foundation's gone, how are we going to stand? What are we going to be able to keep doing? And the thing is, that foundation has to be personal. It can't be based on what your parents did or your grandparents or your pastor or your friend or what they've told you. It has to be based on your own personal relationship with God. Because if we base it on any other person, then they're people, they're human, they're fallible. That foundation's going to be imperfect. They're going to fail us at some time. They're going to do something wrong and it's eventually going to fail. Secondly, our why leads to our what. What we do comes from what our motivations are. The problem is we pretty much always know what we did, but we don't always know why we do it. Think about how many times growing up did you do something and have one of your parents ask you, well, why did you do that? And now sometimes you may have just not wanted to answer, but how many times honestly could you say, I don't know. Or maybe you had some emotional response or outburst that you really couldn't articulate why you did something. How many times have you looked back on your own actions and thought, well, why did I do that? Or maybe even said, I know better than that. Why did I let that happen? It's because you weren't quite sure of the why. Now, admittedly, I'm not a biologist, so this may not be 100% true, or at least I'm sure it's probably an oversimplification. But I've read in a couple of places that the part of your brain that drives behavior is the same part of the brain that controls emotions and feeling and drive. And what happens, what drives behavior is that you have an emotion or a desire that then leads to a motivation, and then another part of your brain, the one that's translates into action, and that's the same part that ha where we, we, th we have rational thought and where we have our language centers and things like that. Think about it. Hunger leads to eating, et cetera, et cetera. That's how your brain works. So we need to know what our why is so we can drive our behavior. If we change why, if we change our motivation, if we th change those things deep down inside, then we can drive what we do. So what is our why? Why do we have faith in God? Why do we love God? Well, John, 1 John 14, 4, sorry, 1 John 4, 19 says, We love him because he first loved us. And Romans 5, 8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So, in part, at least, we love God because he loved us first. He loved us while we were vile, unrighteous, unrepentant sinners. And he died for us because of that. But it goes deeper than that, too. Our why, our motivations, or our foundations have to be based on a personal relationship with God, just like 
we have to base the found the foundations of what we're going to do our why deep down inside has to be that personal relationship as well at some point in each of our lives we have to come to ourselves we have to realize that we are sinners and we have to have a personal experience with god that becomes the foundation of our faith and that is the motivation for everything we do going forward then having that personal experience, that personal salvation experience, that personal realization that God is not just God the Creator, but He's our God, He's our Savior, that then becomes the foundation for our lives moving forward and becomes the foundations for our trust and our hope and becomes the central reason in, for, in our lives for why we trust Him or why we believe in Him. It's not enough to believe in God because somebody told you about Him or even that somebody read a scripture to you. Uh, you have to come to a point in your life where you feel his presence and you feel the convicting power of the Holy Spirit and realize that the only thing you can do is trust in him. That your only hope is that he loved you. And that then becomes the impetus for that deeper relationship with him where you can feel his presence daily in your lives. You can listen to his guidance and then you can grow and solidify that foundation and grow the trust and belief in him due to what he does in your life and your experiences with him. And then that leads to wanting to please him and loving him because it comes the central reason for why you do what you do. That love then pushes out and results in the actions that we do to serve him. Now that also leads you to think about how we communicate with others and how we spread the gospel. You need to know your why so you can communicate it to someone else. It's one thing to tell somebody, well, you need to be saved. And Jesus died for you, and you can go to heaven if you, if you accept him as your Savior. That's telling them what they need to do and how they could do it, and then getting to the why. But most people kind of shut down sometimes when you start with the why. Think about it the other way. If you start with why they need to be saved, to be able to sincerely communicate to them that there is a God that you serve, whose presence you have felt in your life, who you have a personal relationship with, with, that is the creator of all things, and that they, just like you, are a sinner with no hope of obtaining righteousness on their own. And because of that, they're bound for hell. But God, through the sacrifice of his own son, has made a payment for their sins, and they can access it if they trust in God for salvation. Now, that person still has to have their own ex personal experience. They still have, have to have their own relationship, their own point where they come to themselves and realize what they have to do. But if you can get them to understand the why, that'll be a lot harder for them to ignore the what, what they need to do going forward. And that could lead to more being saved. So think about your why. Think about what your motivations are. Think about what your foundation is. Think about why you do what you do. And think about how you can... Make sure that your own foundations are in the right place, that your own motivations are in the right place, that your why is in the right place, and how can you tune that why so that you do the things you need to do for God? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we do thank you first that, that you loved us and that you died for us while we were sinners. Father, we thank you that you gave us that gift. Now we ask you to help each one of us to make sure that we have that proper foundation in you that is a personal foundation that's something that we can point to that we can hold on to when we hit the times of trouble when we experience things that that may try to pull us away from you that we know the reason why we're do we do what we do the reason why we believe in you is because we've had that personal experience because we've had we feel your presence because we trust in you because we, of your love for us father now we ask you to help us all throughout today we ask you to keep us safe we ask you to guide us out the rest of the week and we'll thank you and praise you for it in jesus name amen Thank you for your time this morning. I hope this was a blessing. Be sure to come back for tomorrow's devotion, and I'll talk to you again next week. Goodbye.